Okay, great. So we are live. Let's check the sound quality. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, welcome everyone. I'm glad to see you all. And yeah, just let's wait for the rest to join the room, like a couple of minutes, maybe less. Um, meanwhile, I will tell you what we will discuss today and what are basically the hot topics that we will cover because many of you asked to cover the topic of well basically to elaborate on more into what makes the S bot different from the classic bot and when it is optimal to launch the S bot compared with the classic bot and of course for the newcomers I will explain briefly what is the automated algorithm that we implemented in our bots to let you guys maximize your returns and to minimize the risk in case if the market goes in the opposite direction as you predicted. So uh, my name is Dmitry and now let's begin our webcast. Let's see yeah if you are all present okay that's great so yeah uh, hot topics for today is gonna be the high yield strategy basically how to increase your uh, exposure in the market so that you can maximize your returns and of course what are the side effects of this strategy because you know that for uh, maximized returns there is an increased risk exposure so that's something always you have to keep in mind. We will also cover the low risk strategy, which is also known as the conservative strategy. And I will focus today specifically on the S bot and the classic bot. So let's uh, jump into the first topic, which is going to be the uh, automated algorithm that we have at BeatScap. So that's something new for newcomers and yeah so the point here is that at beats gap we have a so-called greed algorithm and the idea here is that you have a trading range within which uh, you expect the price to swing right and within this trading range you expect the board to make trades on your behalf so we have the sell side which is represented by limit sell orders and we have the buy side which is represented by the limit buy orders they are also known as the greed levels okay so um, once you decided that what is the trading range within which you expect the bot to trade and this trading range is defined by the upper price and the lower limit price and on bids cap you can Mm, drag this upper price and lower price in any direction you want to configure your trading configuration okay so you see this is my trading configuration the sell side and the buy side i can make it narrow i can make it wider so it's clearly up to you to define the trading range okay so th the cool thing about greed algorithm is that it follows a simple rule it just buys low in order to sell later at a higher price so let's assume that the price swings and it triggers the first limit sell order so what's gonna happen here is that the bot will execute this limit sell order and this basically implies the the cash out so it, it sells the base currency right and in this case that's the example with link trading to USDT so here it sells link and we cash out in USDT and later this USDT will be used to allocate a new limit by order right below the last price okay so what's gonna happen assume that the price swings again and now it falls a bit so this newly placed limit by order is going to be executed by the board so the board is going to use the quote currency in this case that's the usdt to buy the base currency which is link okay so it buys link 
And guess what happens next? Exactly. It's gonna place a new sell limit order in order to sell these newly purchased link coins. So this process ensures uh, pretty much an everlasting uh, trading as far as the price stays within the upper price and lower limit price boundaries okay so that's the the way greed works so now the big question is what is the difference between the the classic bot that we have and the s bot because see it looks like they are pretty the same you see they have the same trading range which is defined by the upper price and lower price so you can drag the line in any direction you want and same same applies to the classic bot but the primary difference here is how these bots distribute your investment so when it comes to the classic bot and for this one I yeah so here it is so in case like for the classic bot the idea is that it always buys and sells the same amount of the base currency. In this example, that's LTC as the base currency. So that implies that with the rising price, the, uh, the cash out value rises. Because you see, as the price goes higher, then that means in order to sell 10 light coins it's basically uh, gonna be a higher number all right so you see at first grade it's 120 dollars cash out from the market then the price goes even higher and this 10 ltcs is now worth 130 so you cash out with 130 so that's the point of the classic bot whereas if the price falls right and you know that now it buys and sells always the same uh, amount of the base currency. You say on the downfall, it basically now spends less of the investment per each grid level. Because when the price is lower, that means in order to buy 10 LTCs, you now have to spend uh, less, right? So you see 10, $100, then $90. So what used to cost $90 now costs $80 so that's the point here whereas in case of the um, of the as bot and I think it's example here in reef it, it utilizes another logic so you say here it makes sure that it always spends the same investment value per grid so it always makes sure that it cashes out with $100 and that it always spends $100 to buy the base currency so if it falls let's say to the lowest point it's gonna execute all of these buy limit orders so that's gonna be worth $400 right so now your risk exposure is increased by $400 see and the amount of base currency that you now possess is basically 10 plus 11 plus 12 and then plus 13 okay whereas in case of the classic bot you see as the price falls here your risk exposure if you add all of these numbers it's going to be around 340 dollars so compared with the as bot within the trading range on the downfall the risk exposure on the classic bot is 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 lower compared with the as bot and which is which is something bad uh, if the price reverts from that point so if the price bounces up you say your risk exposure is only 340 so you have lower returns compared with the as bot where your exposure is 400 dollars compared with 340 that we have in the classic bot okay so that's why, in order to answer which one is the best, it, it really depends uh, case by case. Because you never know 
how exactly the price is gonna swing on the market okay so it can be the case that even though you anticipate the market to move sideways right it can be that on the sideways market the price can swing like this only in in the top area of your trading range it can also be the case that it's gonna downfall and move within this area and it also can be the case that it can swing like crazy bouncing off the support and reverting back to the resistance line okay so that's why there is no uh, one perfect answer to say which board is like the best one uh, depending on the market scenario but as a rule of thumb and based on the backtest results that we made and basically based on my practical experience it turns out that on the sideways market uh, basically the sideways market is when you see the price moving like this within the horizontal boundaries uh, the as bought strategy is the best one it brings higher returns compared with the classic bot whereas in case of the classic bot let me actually delete all of these ugly drawings yeah to show you exactly what i mean whereas for the classic bot the perfect scenario is when the price moves like this okay so that's the primary difference that the classic board has proven to be more successful on the rising market when the price moves like this you see it steadily establishes new higher highs and for the s board we are looking for something like this basically that's the horizontal movement within the support and resistance lines okay so the the point here is in which market phase we are currently at so depending on the market scenario that we see right now uh, this strategy varies so for the accumulation phase which you see is basically the sideways market movement and for the distribution market phase which is also the sideways movement it is optimal to stick with the the as bot strategy okay whereas when you anticipate the market to enter the advancing phase or you recognize that we are already in the advancing market phase then stick with the classic bot configuration because on the rising market it brings more returns okay and the cool thing about beads gap is that you don't actually have to blindly trust me on these things and and and, and these conclusions that i make you can you can test this on your own so you can you can actually see what would be the return on the as bot and on the classic bot on the same date range on the same cryptocurrency pair back in the past in the backtest mode so in the backtest mode you set the configuration and you decide which is the date range that you want to backtest basically to see what would be the return if you would have launched the bot let's say back in the 2nd of march until today so during this period what would be the return and compare this result with the s bot configuration in the same date range but just make sure that the the trading range is the same okay and you can you can backtest this to see which one has proven to be more successful and you will find out that in most cases on the sideways market formation when the price swings like this it is optimal to stick with the s bot whereas when the market moves like this it is optimal to stick with the classic bot okay so on this market phase launching as bot would bring you less returns than the classic bot just because the way they distribute your investment varies 
and it turns out that in the classic bot as the price goes higher it basically increases your exposure to the value of the base currency more than the s bot because we remember that in case of the the classic bot it always sells and buys the same amount of crypto okay so that's the point you see uh, let's now go back and I will show you some other tips and tricks uh, that we have here at Beatscap to empower you with more uh, instruments to maximize your returns and to minimize the risk. So let's see, first of all, what questions you have. And thanks to the support team that we have in the live chat, I have the opportunity to select only the most interesting questions. But anyway, don't worry, all your answers, oh, sorry, questions will be answered. So just just be patient. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's, let's move to the next topic, which is the uh, high yield strategies. As now we learn that um, the ASBOT is optimal for the accumulation and the distribution market phases, and the classic bot is optimal for the advancing market phase. Now is the time to figure out how to maximize our returns even more, which basically implies the high yield strategy, which increases the risk exposure in the market. So the point here is that in order to create a high yield strategy, which brings you the, like the highest return possible, you need to find those cryptocurrencies that uh, that are trading to, let's say, to Bitcoin, to BNB, or Ethereum. So, for example, you can look for uh, SUS trading to Bitcoin. We can actually do this on the platform. There's no need to use the <coughs> trading view. So let's see SUS trading to Bitcoin. So it looks like the market is appreciating to Bitcoin so that means that for one SUS coin you can purchase more Bitcoins which is something that we are looking for in the high yield strategies because here if you launch the board on SUS trading to Bitcoin that means that the board is gonna accumulate returns in Bitcoin and the result here is that if the value of Bitcoin relative to USDT appreciates as well that's gonna bring us multiple returns so let's see let's uh, select sys trading to <clears throat> Bitcoin let's remove all the drawings here and let's compare with with the Bitcoin trading to USDT let's basically align the charts <clears throat> so yeah you see so not only does the value of sys relative to bitcoin appreciate which we can see here on the chart but the value of the bitcoin relative to usdt appreciates as well and so we generate returns in bitcoins right and at the same time the value of bitcoin relative to usdt appreciates as well this is a double effect we generate returns in bitcoin in the first place and this return that we seized from the market as the bot been trading for us now brings us returns in the usdt as the value of bitcoin appreciates though the side effect here is that if the market falls then your loss is going to be double x okay so you generated returns in bitcoin right but unfortunately assume that the value of bitcoin uh, depreciates relative to usd this will bring you 2x of a loss okay so what you made in bitcoin is now in the plunge so not only 
the cryptocurrency pair that you've been trading uh, depreciates and we can actually find some examples like I think basic attention token trading to bit BTC is something that <clears throat> can be a great example now it actually appreciates which is good I think 0x relative to Bitcoin depreciates right now yeah you see so <clears throat> the, the, the thing here is that imagine that both Bitcoin relative to USDT imagine that this one is Bitcoin relative to USDT would depreciate and at the same time the bot which you launched on 0x trading to Bitcoin also depreciates so what you've made here in, in Bitcoin this return depreciates and the value of the base currency which you are trading on the bot which is 0x is also depreciates so this is a 2x loss in this case so that's something you need to keep in mind always when you are looking for high yield strategies because high yield strategies they imply that at some point of time you can be wrong you cannot be always right right so at some point you can be wrong and you expected the market to go higher, you expected Bitcoin to appreciate relative to USDT, but unfortunately what happens is that the, the value of Bitcoin relative to USDT depreciates and the cryptocurrency pair that you selected to trade also depreciates, like you see here, 0x trading to Bitcoin. So this is going to be a 2x loss in this case, but you expected 2x return. So that's the price you have to always pay in order to to generate the highest possible return that you can generate in uh, in automated trading that we offer here at Beats Cap, okay? <clears throat> so that's what it takes to create a high yield strategy. And for now, it looks like there are some actually cryptocurrencies that are doing well relative to Bitcoin, which is the one I show you, which is SUS trading to Bitcoin, okay? Yeah. Mm, that's actually not the recommendation or whatsoever it's just that from the observation here it looks like it appreciates and we know that Bitcoin relative to USDT also appreciates which is now fifty six seven hundred dollars and I think easy relative to uh, Ethereum which is another high yield strategy guys which you can consider if you want to accumulate returns in Ethereum and if you anticipate that the value of Ethereum will appreciate um, to USDT even more than the Bitcoin, then it makes sense to stick with the Ethereum accumulation strategy. And easy relative, like easy trading to Ethereum is the cryptocurrency pair, which is worth consideration right now. I say it's basically it just bounces off the angled up support line you see it managed to bounce off this line this one and you see right now that's the point of the bounce off yeah so it looks like it's doing well right now and yeah that's well basically that's the way you uh, scan the market to find those cryptocurrency pairs that can generate you high yield returns okay and now regarding the uh, low risk strategies also known as uh, conservative strategies and what I mean by that is basically those cryptocurrency pairs that <clears throat> are trading to the USDT because when you have pairs like let's say BNB to USDT then here your only risk exposure is BNB value okay so that's the only coin the value of which can appreciate and depreciate intraday whereas what we know is that the usdt costs one dollar and it's gonna cost one dollar tomorrow and it's gonna cost one dollar the day after tomorrow i mean yes of course there are some regulatory concerns about the usdt and there is a threat always because that's the decentralized economy that we are uh, trading here so 
Anyway, we know that it has proven to be quite stable. The USDT, it's been $1 yesterday, it's $1 today, and it's $1 tomorrow. But if you if you don't like the USDT, we have other stable coins, right? We have DAI, we have BUSD, we have TUSD, we have USDC. So, and yeah, BUSD as well. So it's clearly up to you to decide to which stable coin you want to trade. Just make sure that there is enough volume on the market so you can generate maximize returns okay because volume on the market is everything i mean the more liquidity is there is in in the cryptocurrency pair the better it is for the crypto it means that traders are interested in this cryptocurrency and they have trust in the stable coin to which it is trading so that's something for you to keep in mind um for example right now bitcoin trading to usdt has more liquidity than bitcoin trading to busd for example okay so yeah it's something for you to keep in mind always that liquidity has to be taken into account <clears throat> yeah so let's go back to the platform and i will just show you how you can quickly configure uh, any bot so let's say you have no clue which crypto to trade and for this case we have recommended strategies that's basically the list of cryptocurrencies that have proven to be uh and actually let's switch back to the uh, real account mode which right now i'm on the demo mode where i have virtual money to trade with and you will notice that recommended strategies in the demo mode they are different compared with the uh real account so on real account i have uh, other recommended strategies you see and these are results based on the return generated by the bot in the quote currency so you see it managed to make 200% in Ethereum relative to your investment throughout the period of last month you can sort this by uh, weekly results so you see based on weekly results the STPT is the top one so if you like, I mean, you can use these um, metrics as a kind of a um, benchmark for future projections. So you see that STPT, uh, like the bot made 30% on STPT. So that means that there is enough liquidity on this coin. And it, this coin is interesting for the market. Traders are trading it. Investors are investing in this coin. Otherwise, it would be like barely possible for the bot to, to make, like to, to generate 30% just in a matter of one week okay so that's something for you to keep in mind that the high return for the limited time period that means that there is increased volatility in this crypto and at least you can use this metric as a kind of benchmark for future projections it doesn't mean that the next week it's going to make exactly 30 percent but you can use the past metric to say like i mean to at least to anticipate that it's going to make close to this metric okay at least 10 10 percent what is like something you can expect 20 percent is going to be your high yield benchmark for this one yeah so this is like the statistical results here let's say i want to trade vsn to usdt and uh, i'm not i'm not going to use my real account i'm just going to switch back to the demo mode to demonstrate any random trade so let's say we selected um yeah let's stick with the sus trading to bitcoin why not so what i see here right now like a uh, quick analysis is that the price moves somewhat in the sideways formation yeah it's the, the market is kind of rising blah 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 yeah so let's say i anticipate the market to move within this sideways formation so let's say i anticipate to move it like this before it breaks the upper price so i defined my lower price to be exactly where i see the support line based on previous higher highs and lower lows and i place my upper price exactly where i see the resistance line okay so that's how you can uh, make a quick configuration based on support and resistance lines that's clearly uh, something that you can use <clears throat> of course you can have other tools to use to to create your configurations not just based on the support and resistance line i mean it's it's clearly up to you to decide where you want to plot your upper price and lower price
So you see it right now, my configuration looks like this. And this configuration implies that I have around 60% uh, of cell orders because you see this wider cell zone. And it looks like around 40% is going to be uh, of my investment allocated to the buy side. And that's what I see exactly over here. You see a free uh, sorry 3300 USD investment uh, is proportionately distributed with the sys coins so this is the base currency which is going to be uh, distributed across all of my sell orders in this sell side area so my 11000 sys coins they are here in the sell side and the base currency is going to, oh sorry, the quote currency, which is BTC in this case, is going to be used to purchase the uh, SUS coin in case if the price falls. Okay. So you see this exact distribution. Okay. So that means that instantly as you enter the market, you are already exposed to the value of the base currency uh, by 60%. Okay. So in order to initiate this board, this is the amount of SUS coins that you must possess on your balance so that the system can plot all of these cell limit orders correspondingly. And that means that you are exposed to the value of the base currency by 60% at the very start. If you want to reduce this risk exposure, then just drag your upper price lower. And in this case, you see the distribution changed. It's now 9000 sys coins required to launch this trading configuration okay so what what are the techniques that you can use to uh increase or or decrease the risk exposure so you have grid levels okay and the more grid levels you plot like in here it's possible up to 180 the narrower your grid step be, uh, becomes you say that's basically what stands for the distance between your grid uh levels so let me show you so you see what we call the grid space is basically the space between our grid levels okay and that implies that your marginal return is going to be reduced here it's 0 0.12 percent so that's the step difference between the buy and sell order that's the distance between your sell and buy okay if you have fewer grid levels that means that now your marginal return it's also known as the grid step is going to be uh, higher okay because now your your gap between the purchase and sell price is increased relative to the previous configuration where we had 100 grid levels okay so there are uh, like you see, you see if you want to have your margin marginal return to be let's say worth 100% then just plot 1% here and it will automatically adjust the amount of grid levels which exactly corresponds to the marginal return of 1% okay so each trade will bring you 1% of the return in this case but notice that now your grid levels are uh, located quite far from each other and that means that the price must swing crazy enough to capture all of these grid levels because when you have more grid levels you see now this is what we call high frequency trading because your your orders are so um, tightly located to each other that even minor price swings will be activated here okay so that's the point Let's say we want to stick with 20 grid levels. Let's see if I can afford to have 20 grid levels with the investment of 300, sorry, 3,300. It says that yes, all is okay. But what if I want to plot 180? You see now, it's not possible because I just cannot afford this one to have so many grids. Let's actually make some adjustments like this, maybe like this. Yeah, you see, in order to launch this board, I need to adjust the amount of grid levels. So yeah, 70 for this configuration. What about other cryptocurrencies? Let's say one inch. No, actually, that's the one I have here. Maybe um, Ave trading to 
to USDT. Let's see what about this one. Let's say a thousand dollars and 92 grid levels. You say it's not possible. You see at least 1,400. Why so? Well, the point here is that per each grid level, there is a minimum uh, trade size required by the exchange. So that's why the more grid levels you plot, the more investment is required. So what if I still want to stick with the 1,000 USDT for this configuration? In this case, I need to reduce the amount of grid levels. And I can do this automatically by clicking this adjust grid quantity. You see now, 65 is the exact amount I can afford with a 1000 USDT investment. What if I increase my investment to, let's say, 2000? Yeah, so now clearly I can have at least 80 for sure. What about 100? Yeah, still possible. 130. Yeah, it's all good. So, yeah, it's all about the grid configuration and the investment that you have. So the first step for you, like, just let's refresh what we learned so far, is to define the uh, market phase. And based on this market phase, you decide which uh, strategy to use. For the accumulation distribution, we stick with the SBOT. And for the advancing, we stick with the classic, because they have proven to be uh, more profitable on the advancing mode. Okay. So, of course, we do uh, make some minor changes and sometimes the results can uh, be different. But just, I mean, based on my practical experience and backtest results, these are what it is. As both for the sideways and classic for the rising market. So this, the next step is to define the trading range. And the third step would be to set the investment and the grid amount that you want. The final step is to use all available tools that we have to maximize your returns even more and to uh, to minimize the risk in case in case if you were wrong. Okay. So speaking of the risk management, this stop loss is well highly recommended because in case if the price falls, at least here is where your loss gonna stop. So you won't lose more if the price falls even further down. So that's the point here where you see the stop loss is where your loss halts, okay? So you won't lose more than to that point. So you can uh, actually set the stop loss manually, like over here, for example, or you can drag the line, okay? Um, that's what it is. Uh, I mean, what it takes to have the basic risk management tool. It's the stop loss. Okay. In case if the price falls and breaches the lower price and it triggers the stop loss, it's gonna sell all of the base currency which it purchased on this path down to the stop loss. So by that, it ensures that it exits the market by 100%. It sells all of the base currency, so yeah, that means you are no longer exposed to the value of the base currency. If it falls further, we don't care because we don't have this base currency anymore. So, uh, what about the profit maximization tool? Like The best one is here is the trading up. So the cool thing about the trading up is that you know that the, the trading range is the area within which the bot is gonna trade. That's the rule of thumb here. It's gonna trade where the trading range is. So as far as the price remains within the boundaries, it's gonna trade. Though there is uh, an exception here. Let's say the price goes higher, it reaches the upper price here at that point, and the price goes even higher. So without the trading up, what would happen is that our trading would stop exactly at that point where we have the upper price, okay? But thanks to the trading up enabled, the board will adjust the trading range so that it follows the market rally. So now your trading range is going to be over here. So basically, this function allows your uh, board to follow the, the market rally. And here is the perfect example. I have UFI trading to Bitcoin and 
it's been like three months and 26 days so far uh actually maybe not the best example let's switch back to the rent maybe to bitcoin let's see what i have here yeah sometimes it takes time to load all the data that we depict on the chart because there can be so many trades yeah mm, maybe still not the best one maybe other trading to use d yeah so here's the perfect example you see i got stuck here in this area this was my trading range at the time when i launched this board eight months ago guys like that's insane i have some bots that are still active like eight months ten months that's crazy Jade. yeah well anyway you see uh, in this board i did not have my trailing up enabled yeah you say it switched off so that's why i was so unfortunate that i got stuck here in this area even though the price then rallied like crazy you see and i'm pretty much sure that my return here right now would be around 150 percent if i would have enabled the trailing up okay so always pay attention to this uh instrument because it enables the board to follow the rally so it can be the case that you are away from your laptop maybe you are sleeping right now and the market is making crazy moves upwards so if you have your trading up enabled then the board will follow the rally automatically and you don't have to worry about it anymore that you skip the rally because the board follows it with the trading up enabled okay <laughs> so that's the cool thing about trading up and by the way uh we have the just like two days ago um we released the video that i made and basically i launched bot on beats gap on three commas and beat universe uh, to demonstrate the difference and what it takes to launch the bot on all of these platforms the side like mm, i mean yeah the pros and cons so all of that uh, due diligence done and we have uh, perfect results to to share in this video uh, where you can find what it makes beats gap so good and what are the tools that we have to maximize your returns and to minimize the risk yeah just go on youtube and go beats gap subscribe and that's the first video that will pop out yeah i just launched it like two days ago and yeah watch it and you will find what makes beats gap significantly different from other platforms that also try to uh, implement the automated trading in crypto okay so yeah that's the thing the trading up is a big thing and i actually always make sure that i have it on uh, these are my sample trades then that means that <clears throat> in some active trades i don't have trading up on but yeah in most cases I actually have my trading up enabled and uh, because I want my bot to follow the rally 24-7 uh, on my behalf like if you forgot to switch the trading up on then you can always go to the settings and make sure it is on same applies to the stop loss and same applies to the take profit the cool thing about the take profit is that you can set the uh, investment change that you want the bot to achieve so that as it achieves this percentage it just closes the bot okay so for example let's say uh, for ufi bitcoin right now my investment change is 15 percent which is cool but let's say i want to close it uh, as soon as it reaches 20 percent and to do that i just go to settings i switch on the take profit and i said 20 percent so by that i make sure that as soon as it reaches 20 percent of the investment change it will just close the board it will sell all the all of the base currency which i have here in this active trade so that's the 100 percent exit from the market right now uh, by the way in order to see what is your current risk exposure in the strategy just go to uh, settings here information 
and you see the exact amount of the base currency right now in open orders and by the way all of your open orders are here you see the sell side you see the buy side you can filter the column you see which is the lowest price it's gonna buy which is the highest price it's gonna sell so all information is provided here for you and you know exactly what is your current risk exposure and how much is there in the quote currency like which is so quote currency stands for the volume in your buy orders and the base currency stands for the volume in your sell orders because the base currency is what we sell and the quote currency is what we use to buy the base currency right so all the metrics they are here and then, like another cool feature that we have is the bot statistics you know exactly what is the daily return the board achieved since the inception and you can use this data to analyze the performance and to compare this metrics with other configurations let's say you launched as bot configuration on ufi to bitcoin and what you also did is you launched the classic bot on ufi to bitcoin at the same time simultaneously to compare this configurations how two different configurations will behave on the same cryptocurrency pair so that you will find out which one turns out to be the most successful and using these metrics you can compare those configurations to see which one brings you the most returns on a daily basis you see if we have the average daily return that's 0.34 percent for my ufi to bitcoin so it brings me exactly 0.34% on average relative to my investment in bitcoins every single day. Okay? So all the pro like all the metrics you need to analyze your uh, performance they are already here. The average daily return, the investment change which is basically the primary metric for you because it takes into account the value change of the base currency whereas the column where you have the bot profit is always positive because the cool thing about automation is that regardless of the market trend let's use another one um, <clears throat> so regardless of the market direction upside sideways or even on the downfall like Bitscap bot is able to generate returns in the quote currency every single day regardless of the trend okay so that's why this column is always positive what you need to f understand is that the value in the investment change can be different like in case of UFI to Bitcoin you see even though the bot profit is 39% my investment is only 15%. Why so? That's because of the downfall which you see over here from the 8th of March right until today. Yeah, well actually even more, you see, over here. Huge downfall. And even on this downfall, the bot was able to find these minor trade opportunities to buy low and sell high, you see. So it basically on the downfall it trades for me it generates returns in the quote currency and by doing so it offsets the negative value change of the base currency but still i am exposed to the value depreciation of my base currency and that's why i have 15 percent compared with the bot profit which is 39 percent okay so once again it's 15 percent because yuffie depreciated heavily from that point that was the mid of february until today you see that's why and that's the key metric that's the investment change relative to your initial value so if you multiply your investment by this percent you will get the exact value of your position as of today okay so don't be confused <clears throat> uh, just just take into account that the change is your primary like the the top one to monitor okay the bot profit is the one that you use to see the 
the success rate of your strategy the average daily is the metric that you use to compare different strategies with one another to see which one has proven to be the most successful which is something that you can also analyze in the spot history so these are all my closed trades and as i close these bots i always can come back to see what was the uh, configuration that i used in this bot what was the average daily you see this one has proven to be successful so i, I mean if i want to launch the bot once again on ing to bitcoin for sure i will go to spot history to see what was the configuration that i used which has proven to be successful for me you see the grid spacing 0 0.49 the investment i allocated and i can also see yeah i close it by the stop loss okay so all the metrics are here basically the lower price i said the upper price i said yeah so even the amount of grid levels you see 70 grid levels that's the configuration that i used so use this spot history to find your winners so that next time you are willing to launch the board on the cryptocurrency pair that you used to trade before just go to the spot history to see what was the configuration which made you so successful in this trade okay so that's like another outstanding thing at Bitscap. it's something that you won't find on other platforms and that's only at Bitscap where you can have such a thorough and sophisticated analysis you see <clears throat> so let's see the time okay so let's go back to see what are the things that we wanted to cover today so we covered high yield strategies we covered low yield strategies we covered uh what makes s bot different from the classic bot and uh, i think i promised to show some other risk management tools that you can use so um, apart from the stop loss you can exit the market with the exit options over here so you see right now depending on the uh, investment change there is a set of exit options so i click on it and right now for this one i have uh, two options to exit either i can sell all of the base currency at the market price and it's gonna sell exactly this amount of ufis or i can cancel all my open orders so you see all of the uh, open open orders that i have here they will be cancelled on the exchange but the ufi and the bitcoin which is in the quote currency here is gonna be like it's gonna stay on my balance so even though i closed the board i mean i closed all of the open orders i'm still exposed to the value change of the ufi so if you no longer want to be exposed to the value change of the base currency which you used in this trade make sure to exit the market uh, with the market market sell okay because this is a hundred percent exit from the market whereas by cancelling out all open orders you just basically halt the trading but you are still exposed to the base currency okay um <clears throat> unfortunately or i will actually oh, thanks well i don't have negative trades here i mean i don't have losing trades but i actually need the one right now just to show you the third option to exit the market which is the break even and since i don't have this uh losing trade to show it right now just have to uh follow me so the like if you have negative trade like you are in minus 10 percent for example then you will see this third option to exit which is uh, sell at the break even price that's something that you will see which means that this is the price that it sets where if the price is reached let's say your break even somewhere at that point break even so if you are in the downfall and you are already minus 10 percent but you don't want to lock in the minus 10 percent you don't want to um, to tolerate this result you still want to exit the market 
with better results. And like the first option is to exit with a 0% of the return, which is something like better than minus 10%, right? But still worse than, let's say, 1% of the return. Yeah. So that's why that's the third option, which is known as the break even, where you exit the board with a 0% of the return, which is an option only if you are in the negative side. So that implies that you need to wait for the price to bounce off back a bit to reach this break even price so that it exits exactly with the 0% of the investment change. Okay. But yeah, still, this is quite of a risk because on the downfall, to expect the market to rally so that you reach the 0% of the return is something quite risky because that's basically uh, playing against the trend. Okay. But still, that's an option. And if your research is sound and you anticipate the, the market to make uh, a short term um, revert, then that's clearly up to you to stick with the break even exit option. So, so far we have five exit strategies. That's the stop loss. In case of if the market moves in the opposite direction as you predicted that's the like the uh the basic the, the simplest one and the most important one to use always that's something that i always recommend make sure you have the stop loss on when you launch the bot that's the first option to exit the market uh, the take profit that's the exit uh, by the investment change let's say 20 percent. as soon as it reaches 20 percent, it just sells all of the base currency and other three options they are here that's the sell at market right now that's cancel all my opens uh, orders right now but still i'm going to be exposed to the base uh, base currency and the final option is the break given just like the one i explained to you a couple of minutes ago so these are five exit strategies guys for you to uh, to follow based on your uh based on your trading configuration and the price behavior on your cryptocurrency pair that you are trading, okay? So, yeah, uh, by the way, in order to find and develop your best strategy, make sure to trade in the demo mode. That's exactly the one I'm using right now, because in demo mode, I have virtual money literally on every important cryptocurrency exchange which i can use to uh, experiment okay that's basically the sandbox for you to find your best solution so a tip like a, a, a trick for you guys is that you can simultaneously launch several configurations on one cryptocurrency pair just by switching with other cryptocurrency exchanges let's say there is a Bitcoin trading to USDT for sure on the Binance and you will find the same cryptocurrency pair on another cryptocurrency exchange and you can simultaneously launch different configurations or the same configurations on different cryptocurrency exchanges to see the, the, the result, to see the outcome, to see what makes them different. Because it can be the case that on some exchanges the, the uh, trading fee per execution is lower on some exchanges it's higher so that's why you will find out that some configurations launched on the same cryptocurrency pair on different uh, exchanges uh, can be lower or higher okay so that's the thing to also take into account the trick uh, number two is if you want to launch several configurations on one cryptocurrency pair let's say bitcoin to usdt on one exchange, let's say Binance, then there is an option. You see, right now I have ING trading to USDT. Let's see if I can launch another one. ING to USDT. You see, I am not able to do this because I already have this bot active trading. So the trick here is to find if the ING is trading to another stable coin. You see, it is trading to BUSD. So that's the trick, you see. The only difference is in the stable coin, but 
that's not really the difference because we know that the value of the stable coin is exactly one dollar so you won't see the the difference in the price of ing to be usd relative to ing to usdt but that's the trick you can launch uh, the configuration on this one and then use the T simultaneously. That's the trick, guys. Okay. Uh, well, more or less a trick. It's just that I'm playing with the stable coin, which I assume to be pretty much the same. Like use the T, BUSD. It's one dollar. So what's the difference? So I see the question: If investment uh, is one hundred dollars. And the investment change is 10% and the bot profit is 10%. Will I get 20% of my investment if I close the bot? So the answer is no, because uh, they are not added up together. The thing is that in the investment change, the bot profit is already taken into account. Okay, so you see this 15% investment change in my UFI. So that means that this bot profit is already taken into account over here and without this bot profit my uh, change here would be i assume somewhere minus five percent so thanks to the bot thanks to the profit it managed to accumulate it it, it, it offset the fact that the value change of the youth is now depreciating and that's why instead of minus five percent i have 15 percent and i have actually uh, a perfect case for you here how on the downfall the bot is able to save my investments so you see um, here i compare a simple hodl strategy with the bits gap automation so i assume that you just purchased quantum where i have hodl over here and you purchased it in anticipation that it will appreciate in the future so that you can lock in in decent returns but unfortunately what happens is that the price falls and according to the current price you are in the minus 6.88 percent of a loss that's the hodl strategy here you just buy crypto and hodl it nothing else but in case of the automation you would have only minus three percent because during this downfall the board managed to find these minor trade opportunities to buy low and sell high you see this marginal effect and this results in plus two percent in bot profit and this profit is used to offset the minus 6.88 percent and that's why it's only minus three percent because the bot profit is already priced in the investment change and that's why it is only minus three percent whereas if you would just simply buy quantum and hodl it in your portfolio you would be in minus 6.88 percent area okay so that's another advantage of automation is that even if you were wrong about the market direction and unfortunately the price falls you are like the bot minimizes the loss like significantly you see that's by more than twice it minimizes the overall loss so once again answering to your question the key metric is investment change so if you invest at 100 percent oh sorry 100 dollars and your investment change is 10 percent that means that your return is 10 dollars okay and that means that in this 10 percent investment change the bot profit is already priced in that's that's the, the the rule of thumb here in this case so yeah by the way quickly to remind you that uh beats gap participates in the binance tournament which is the spring tournament worth the like the pool size is one million and six hundred dollars and you can join the team here by the way uh the last time i checked there were like 360 uh users i think so yeah 360 bits gapians are already waiting for the tournament to kick the asses right so we can do this together guys you see that so, there are so many uh, prizes pool here there is an individual pool there is a team pool so lots of opportunities to 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 stand out and the last time we have proven to be successful like the last time there was a binance competition we uh we made the ninth place i mean we were in the top 10 
the ninth place that's insane guys and now right right now um i mean having more skills having more experience we and so many people all together efforts combined we can achieve even bigger results like top five why not i mean yeah big up thing uh, there is also an exclusive futures combo bot which is about to be released and that's something that you all been waiting for yes you will be able soon like <laughs> i mean really really soon you will be able to launch bots on futures contracts and there is a trend bot we are about to release uh, the the press release the video is also incoming the webcast related to futures bot is also incoming soon and i'm actually working on it right now already training the the futures bot in the beta mode and yeah just making preparations for the next webcast to to present you this brand new product that we've been waiting for so long and and testing it for so long to make sure the the algorithm is smooth and you can generate steady returns and the risk is ma minimized as much as possible so and based on this there is an exclusive promo as well uh, yeah so all information is here and i hope the support team is going to send you the link right now in the live chat box yeah so paul please send the link which is in the help desk that's this one so that yeah so guys yeah join the team all together combined more chances to to kick the asses let's let's do this now let's quickly go back to the uh platform and let me see what questions you have so when it comes to choosing the bots is it better to rely on monthly bots daily or weekly so as a rule of thumb the more time we have to i mean like monthly result means that there have been 30 days so the more days passed the more um the more data we have to analyze and the like the long-term analysis is always better than the short-term analysis so that's why for me it always makes sense to stick with the monthly backtest results rather than with the three days and weekly results because i mean i studied the statistics and all that stuff and i mean the rule in statistics is that the more data you have the more valid is the research outcome so it makes more sense to base your uh future expectations based on monthly backtest results okay so right now it's only possible to have a monthly backtest result but um, who knows maybe we will enable even uh, longer time periods maybe six months one year so you can back you will be able to back test strategies uh with a time horizon of six months one year okay so you see i have some bots active for eight months ten months so you would have this opportunity to back test them yeah uh so yeah recommendation like based on my experience is the monthly back test result so how can you add funds to a bot while the bot is working well the answer is that it is not possible once you launch the bot that's the only uh that's the only investment value i mean it's frozen you can't do anything about it because otherwise it would imply that you would cancel out some open orders and it would have to create new orders I mean it, it really makes sense just to close the bot and launch it with new uh, configuration so let's say i'm no longer satisfied with my thousand and nine hundred investment so what i can do i can close it let's actually close it bye bye and i can launch this bot with now other metrics uh it was what 100 900 and something right 1900 but now i let's say i want to increase so now i want 2400 
So now I can make configuration. And this time I will not forget about the trading up as I did with the iron, uh, yeah, with this trade the last time. So yeah, the answer is that you can only close the bot and then launch it once again with newer settings. Is it possible to change the grid spacing while the bot is active? So the, the answer is no. I mean, you can change the grid levels amount, you can change the grid step. The only thing that you can change, guys, is here. Like, you click on this button and you can only change the deck profit, you can only change to tr the trading up and the stop loss. Because other metrics, they are... Like, you are locked in in this metrics, uh, sorry, uh, configurations. You are not longer able to change the amount of grid levels because otherwise it would just destroy the configuration entirely. Because interrupting the process is is never good. So you are basically trying to, to, to interrupt the process of trading. So that's why we we, we don't have this option. And that's why if you want to set fewer grid levels or more grid levels, you just close the bot and launch it with new settings. Okay. The only settings that you can change is the trading up, take profit and stop loss. Uh, will the futures bot be different from existing plan? Uh, well, if you mean by plan the uh, configuration logic and uh, the algorithm it follows well yes it's gonna be like completely different because this new trend bot which is designed for futures trading will have two options which is the long and the uh, short so you will be able to launch the bot to generate returns on the downfall which is basically the short selling bot and you will have this option to launch the long bot, which will take advantage of the rising market. Okay. So, well, th th there are tips and tricks related to this new bot, and uh, it's going to be a bit, a bit just uh, like slightly more complicated than the S, like the spot bot. But what I suggest you to do right now is to practice more with the S spot, like spot market bots, so that next time. I present you the trend bot, you would be more prepared to uh, grasp the whole nature of this newly developed trend bot, okay? It's just about the practice and the experience. The more experience you have, the easier it's for you and like the quicker it takes for you to, uh, to understand how the incoming bot is going to work. So I will make sure to provide you with as uh, like uh, as much information as possible the next time we have the webcast related to the new bot and I will prepare use cases and with each new webcast I will provide you with strategies that you can use because I'm like you guys I'm I'm trading with you together and I'm looking always for new opportunities, for tips and tricks, and that's why that's my aim here, to educate you more, to provide you with more tips and tricks. And I hope I'm doing great here. I hope that I deliver what I promise. Use cases, strategies, and by the way, uh, you can watch previous webcasts where I cover strategies that you can use. And in BitsGap, if you go to block and go to trading bot there are ready-made strategies you see automated strategies that's the one i prepared for you guys you see rising channel strategy and the exact configuration for the bot is here rectangle top you see everything is here for you so these are ready-made strategies that you can use if you are a newcomer you've never traded grid strategies or you traded grid bots, but you are looking for new strategies, and so here it is, okay? So always make sure to to follow the, the YouTube, to read the blog, and to participate in weekly webcasts, because I'm, 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 I'm always trying to add some new valuable information, something useful for you, 
so that all together we can beat the market okay and yeah just quickly remind you that the best way to prove our success uh, is on the binance spring tournament where i think after this webcast we will have uh, more than 400 people participating in like just make sure to join the beats cap team because there are many teams there you can either go to the binance platform to find uh, the tournament page and write down the beats cap to in the search box to find the team or just you see join the beats cap team over here yeah so it's in the uh, let's let's open it block and here it is you see the spring tournament recent articles just go here and join the beats cap team that's the link here join the link you see current bonus pool current part let's actually see how many of us are there let's go to beads gap okay for some reason it's takes some time to load the page well anyway i don't want to waste your time just because my internet is having some troubles anyway uh yeah 331 so far yeah let's 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 beat the market let's make it together okay anyway thanks a lot for your attention i hope i answered to all of your questions if not then make sure to uh, ask them here in the box over here the support line that we have you can also ask your questions in the telegram chat community that we have and you can always ask the question on the, in the youtube and as well in the next webcast because i always make sure to find the best like the most interesting questions so that it's going to be a win-win scenario for all of us to provide you with more information as possible yeah uh yeah really appreciate your time uh, it's such an overwhelming feeling for me to have so many people uh, online today um, listening to what I teach you and all that stuff that's that's really an overwhelming feeling and thanks a lot I will do my best like I, I promise like that's my credo that's my agenda every day to make sure next webcast I provide you with more insights and useful tips and tricks because once again I believe that strong community is what makes beats gap unique and that's exactly what it takes to achieve the the highest success to increase our odds of success is by combining our efforts and we do this on our webcasts because i see your questions and the more interesting questions i see uh, that's the best feedback for me to prepare uh, answers next time to elaborate on other topics that are interesting for you as well so once again thanks a lot i appreciate um, stay safe and i wish you profitable trading and let's join the beats cap team on binance spring tournament to kick the asses so yeah let's go guys see you